Hi students, today we are going to do a very important topic in number theory, congruences. We will first define what congruences are and then we will study some basic theorems which we quite frequently use. Let us say we are given three integers a, b and m where m is a non-zero integer. Then we say that the integers a and b are congruent to each other modulus m. If the difference of a and b is divisible by m. By divisibility as you know we mean if a minus b upon m gives us an integer we say a minus b is divisible by m. So we write it as a is congruent to b mod of m. This is the notation of congruence and it is quite different from the notation of equality. We can see there are three bars here. This notation was given by none other than the famous mathematician Gauss. Now once again A is congruent to B if and only if the difference of A and B is divisible by M. Here mod is used in short for modulus. Modulus in layman's language means measure and mod M means we are dividing by M. Alternatively, we say that A is congruent to B mod of M if and only if A and B give us the same remainder when they are divided by M. A few things you should note. Given that M is non-zero and A is equal to B, then A will always be congruent to B mod of M. But vice versa is not true. If A is congruent to B, it does not imply A will be equal to B. Let's look at some examples. Here we say 4 is congruent to 2 mod of 2. And it is correct. 4 is congruent to 2 because the difference of 4 and 2 can be seen when divided by 2 gives us an integer 1. So the difference four of 4 and 2 is divisible by 2. So they are congruent. In the second example, the difference of 3 and 2 is equal to 1. And 1 is not divisible by 5. So you can see that 5 does not divide 1. Whenever we have to write that the two integers are not congruent, we use this negation sign. Here we have written 3 is not congruent to 2. Let us look at the first theorem. The theorem states if A, B, C and M are integers, given that M is non-zero, then A is congruent to A, modulus of M, which means that A is congruent to itself. This property is known as the reflexive property. If the second property says if A is congruent to B mod of M, then B is congruent to A. This is symmetric property. And the third property states if A is congruent to B modulus M and B in turn is congruent to C mod of M, then A will be congruent to C mod of M. This is the transitive property. All these properties can be checked by taking some particular integer values for A, B, C and M. But here, let's give a general proof. So, coming to the first property, we can see that the difference of A and A is 0 and whatever value of M we take, it will always divide 0. So, A is congruent to A mod of M. The second property is that if A is congruent to B, B is congruent to A. So, let's start with given A is congruent to B mod of M. Now this means that the difference of A and B is divisible by M. From the definition of divisibility, it means A minus B upon M is equal to some integer. Let's say it is K. If I pull out minus sign, 
we will get minus b minus a upon m is equal to k or b minus a upon m is minus k which will again be an integer. So if the difference of b and a is divisible by m from the definition of congruence it means b is congruent to a mod of m. This property is proved. Let's come to the third property. We are given a is congruent to b mod of m and b is congruent to c mod of m. Now using the definition of congruence we get a minus b upon m is equal to some integer let's say x and b minus c upon m is equal to some integer y. If we add both the terms we will get a minus b upon m plus b minus c upon m is equal to x plus y. Let us say it is equal to some integer k. Now if we take the LCM the term minus b and b will cancel and we will be left with a minus c upon m is equal to this k, the integer k. Again from the definition of congruence, if the difference of a and c is divisible by m, it means they both are congruent. Here, note, a will be congruent to 0 mod of m if and only if m divides a. So, it means that a will be congruent to 0 if and only if a is divisible by m. The second thing to notice that a congruent to b mod of m means a is equal to b plus m times t where t is some parameter. t can take different values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. We can see how do we get this? So, the congruence of A and B mod of M means that the difference of A and B when divided by M will be equal to some integer. Let us say that integer is T. So, if we multiply T by M, we will get A minus B is equal to M into T or A is equal to B plus MT. We took the B on the other side. Let's look at the second theorem. It states that if we are given A is congruent to A dash mod of M and B is congruent to B dash mod of M, then if we add or subtract the left hand sides, it will be equal to the sum and difference of the right hand sides of the congruences. So we write it as A plus minus B is congruent to A dash plus minus B dash mod of M. And the second property says if we multiply the left hand sides, it will be congruent to the product of the right hand sides. Let us give a general proof here. So we are given A is congruent to A dash mod of M and B is congruent to B dash mod of M. From the definition, it means the difference of A and A dash is divisible by M and let us say it is equal to the integer x. And the difference of B and B dash is divisible by M. Let us say it is equal to Y. If we add the two, we get A minus A dash upon M plus B minus B dash upon M is equal to X plus Y, which is equal to, let's say, some integer K. Now, we'll take LCM and we will now rearrange the terms. So what we do, we have A minus A dash plus B minus B dash. We'll keep the terms A and B together and the terms A dash B dash together. We'll pull out this minus sign and we've kept it here. So if you take the LCM, you get A plus B minus A dash plus B dash upon M is equal to the integer K. If the difference of two terms is divisible by M, it means they are congruent. So we get the uh, congruence A plus B is congruent to A dash plus B dash mod of M. Instead of adding, if we subtract the two terms, we will get A minus B is congruent to A dash minus B dash mod of M. To prove the second property, which says, let's see what the property, it says that when left and left side is multiplied, it is congruent to product of the right hand sides. We'll start with this term. So, which means that AB minus a dash b dash upon m. Here we take this and if we are able to show that this is an integer, it would prove that they both are congruent to each other. 
So what we do, we start with this term and we add and subtract AB dash, which gives us AB minus AB dash plus AB dash minus A dash B dash. Because these two cancel and we uh, get the same term. So now what we do, we will take these two terms together and the other two terms we arrange in the same uh, order. So here what we do, we will pull out A, we will get A B minus B dash upon M and this will be B dash is taken out. This would mean B dash bracket A minus A dash upon M. From our 1, we know that A minus A dash upon M is X and B minus B dash upon M is Y. So we will substitute this as Y and this as X. So this will give us this whole thing is equal to A into Y plus B dash into X. And we know that because each one of them is an integer. A, Y, B dash, X, they are all integers. Their sum will also be an integer. This shows that AB minus A dash, B dash upon M is an integer. If the difference of two terms when divided by M gives us an integer, or if the difference is divisible by M, we say that they are congruent. So AB is congruent to A dash, B dash. Let's look at the third theorem. A very important theorem which tells us about the cancellation law. Now what does it say? It says that if AB is congruent to BC mod of M, then A will be congruent to C mod of M. If and only if the GCD of B and M is 1. In other words, given AB is congruent to BC mod of M, we can cancel that factor from both the sides which is relatively prime to M. Let's prove this. We are given AB is congruent to BC mod of M. So from the definition, AB minus BC will be divisible by M. Let us say it is some integer K. Now this means M is going to divide AB minus BC. So we keep B common and we will get B bracket A minus C. So if M divides these two terms, either M will divide B or M will divide A minus C. If GCD of B and M is 1, then M will not divide B. If M does not divide B, M has to divide A minus C to give us an integer. So if M is not, uh, B is not divisible by M, M divides A minus C, it means that A is congruent to C. And this tells us that the GCD of B and M is 1. So we can cancel only that factor from both the sides of the congruence which is relatively prime to M. We will look at some examples here based on all the theorems we have done so far. So first one see, 2 will always be congruent to 2 mod of 5. Why? Because the difference of 2 and 2 is 0 and 5 will always divide 0. So this congruence holds. Let us say we are given two congruences. 3 is congruent to 1 mod 2 and 1 is congruent to 1 mod 2. Then if we add the left hand sides, it will be congruent to the sum of the right hand sides, modulus 2. We also have to show if we subtract the left sides, then that will be congruent to the difference of the right hand sides. So, let us see. If we add the left hand sides, 3 plus 1 will be 4. And if we add the right hand sides, 1 plus 1 is 2. 4 is congruent to 2 mod of 2. We can see that. The difference of 4 and 2 is 2 and that is divisible by 2. Let's try the difference. 3 minus 1 is 2. And when we take the difference of right hand sides, 1 minus 1 is 0. We can see 2 is congruent to 0 mod of 2. In this example 3, we are given if 3 is congruent to 1 mod of 2 and 5 is congruent to 3 mod of 2, we have to show the second property of theorem 2. So 
the second theorem uh, and the second property of that theorem was if we multiply left left sides of a congruence of two congruences it will be congruent to the product of the right sides of the congruences so here we can see if we multiply 3 into 5 it is 15 1 into 3 is 3 this gives us 15 and this gives us 3 15 is congruent to 3 mod of 2 this holds example 4 here says you are given 9 is congruent to 6 mod 3 and 6 is congruent to 3 mod of 3 then prove transitivity we can see that 9 is congruent to 6 and 6 is congruent to 3 we can see 9 is congruent to 3 mod 3 9 minus 3 is 6 and 6 is divisible by 3 in the fifth example, we are given 6 is congruent to 12 mod of 2. We have to show that 3 can be cancelled from both the sides of the congruence. Let us see. 6 is congruent to 12 mod 2 can be written as the 6 is nothing but 2 into 3, the left hand side. And 12 is nothing but 2 into 2 into 3 mod 2. See, on both the sides of the congruence, we have either 2 as a common factor, which can be cancelled. We also have 3 as a common factor. Now, if we cancel 2 from both the sides, the congruence 3 is congruent to 6, mod 2 will not hold. So, we can only cancel that factor which is relatively prime to 2. Here, 3 is relatively prime to 2. So, we can cancel 3 from both the sides. And that will give us 2 is congruent to 2 into 2. We see that the congruence holds. 2 is congruent to 4 mod of 2. This proves the cancellation law. Let's come to the fourth theorem. This theorem is also quite useful. We use it to find the residues. If A is congruent to B mod of M, then we have to show that A to the power N will be congruent to B to the power M mod of b to the power n mod of m for any positive integer n. Now, what does it mean? It means that if a is congruent to b, then we can always raise both the sides of the congruence by some positive integer n. So, let us say we are given, how do we prove it? We will start with what is given to us. We are given a is congruent to b mod of m. Let us write it n times. Now, these are n a's on the left and these are n b's on the right. If we multiply all these a's, we'll get a to the power n. If we multiply all the right hand sides, it will be b to the power n using a theorem. I'll go back to the theorem 2. Theorem 2 says that if we multiply left sides of any uh, two congruences, and the right hand sides of the any two uh, right hand sides of the congruences congruence will still hold, still hold now here we don't have two congruences we have n congruences so if we extend that theorem to n congruences a to the power n will be congruent to b to the power n thank you for watching